Greetings. Today we continue in our series on Elijah. Our reading is from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we planned out the contours of this sermon series many months ago, and we did not know that this week, uh, as we consider this story of Elijah going and bringing food to a woman in need, we did not know that that same week we would be ourselves bringing food to those who are in need, those who need relief in the aftermath of Hurricane Laura. And yet that is what we have been doing this week. We've run supply missions to many towns, to Lake Charles, to De Quincey, De Ritter, Leesville, Rose Pine, Maryville. And I was together with a number of uh, members of our outreach team during this week when we got on a phone call with a man who represented the town of Rose Pine. And he asked Penn on the phone, he said, Penn, were you able to make it to the church in Rose Pine? And clearly he, he thought that we had not been able to make it that day. He hadn't gotten word. But Penn said, well, yes, we did make it. We brought a truck full of ice. And when we arrived, there was a long line of cars waiting to get ice. And I wondered, Penn said, if there would be enough. But there was. There was enough ice for every car in line, plus two bags left over. And when the man on the other side of the line heard this story, there was a pause. And then his voice broke as he said, Thank you. Thank you for remembering Rose Pine. So this week, as we delve into this story of Elijah, we will consider how Elijah went to a widow with the word. Elijah went to a widow with the word. So first, Elijah went. Well, the opening sentences of this passage uh, are structured uh, to show God's command and Elijah's obedience. The word of the Lord came to Elijah and said, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. And then it says, So he arose and went to Zarephath. This literary structure of uh, command and obedience we saw last week in the uh, description of Elijah going to the brook. And it exemplifies the obedience that God calls for in his people. God calls and his people respond. And we've seen this pattern of going out, of, of leaving, all throughout the scriptures. Consider Abraham, for example, in Genesis 12. 
God comes to him and says, leave your land, leave your family, and go to a land that I will provide. Trust in me. Trust that I will provide. Similarly, God came to Moses and said, lead my people out of Israel. And not only Moses, but the people had to believe, to have faith, to go out as God had commanded, and to trust God for their provision. So Elijah went out at God's command. Now, God sent Elijah to an interesting place. It was the, the town of Zarephath. And it says here that Zarephath at the time was under the control of Sidon, a larger city uh, to the north of Israel. Now, we should remember this city of Sidon from our passage uh, just two weeks ago. Because Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, was the daughter of Ethbal, the king of Sidon. In other words, it was from this land, Sidon and Zarephath, that Ahab, the king, had brought in the worship of Baal, the worship of the false gods, through Jezebel into Israel. And so it's very interesting to see that God when his people turn away to this false god, sends his prophet and his word to the very place where those false gods came from. He wants them to see that God's word will not be stopped. And when Baal is incapable of providing rain and food, God can provide, even in the land of Baal. So Elijah went and he went to a widow, to a widow. God says, behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. And Elijah comes to the city and he sees a, a widow there near the gate gathering sticks. And he calls to her and says, bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, uh, he said, bring me a morsel of bread. She responds, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. So not only is this a widow, uh, someone who lacks uh, means of support, uh, it is also one who is hungry. And she is convinced that she is at the point of death. But God has a particular care for widows. And we see this throughout all of the scriptures. Uh, the commandments of God in the law, in the Torah, uh, speak specifically to widows. Exodus 22 says, You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. And Deuteronomy 24 says that when you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not strip it afterward, you should leave some grapes so that those in need can glean from it. It says, it shall be for the sojourner and the fatherless and the widow. The Psalms also say that the Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. And perhaps you remember in James, uh, the letter of James, it says that a true religion is taking care of widows and uh, orphans. So God has a constant and consistent care for widows in the scriptures. And we see that reflected in this passage where God sends Elijah to this widow. Now, if we took, take a look at the image on the front of our bulletin, we can see the, the two moments in this story. Uh, first, there is the moment where Elijah comes and meets the widow. Uh, near the gate of the city as she is gathering sticks. Uh, you can see there in the image that there is a statue of Baal. This is the land that worships Baal. And Elisha is uh, telling her to uh, bring water and to, to bring bread. But she looks at him with um, a kind of dismissal because she knows that she has little left and she believes that she will soon die. But as she listens to his command, as she receives uh, this message from the Lord, she goes and bakes bread and 
brings it to him. And then she finds that the flour in her uh, jar does not run out, and the oil in the jug does not run out. And so we can see that she is joyful as she and her son make bread uh, and uh, persist and live for many days. Elijah went to a widow with the word. An important detail to notice here is that this widow received Elijah. She noticed that he was a man of God. She actually mentions the Lord uh, by his proper name. And she listens and receives and is obedient herself. So just as Elijah is obedient to the word of God, so is this widow obedient to the word. And uh, for that reason, uh, she does benefit from the provision that God provides. Now, as we read this story, it is tempting for us to think of ourselves in the place of Elijah. Uh, after all, just this week, we have been taking needed goods, uh, needed supplies and food and water, and bringing it to those who are in need. But we should realize that, spiritually speaking, we are not Elijah. Spiritually speaking, we are the widow. We are the one who are in need. And that's important for us to recognize because if we do not realize that we are in need, then we are guilty of pride. This is actually what happens in, uh, much later in the life of Jesus. When Jesus went to the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown, and he read from the scriptures and spoke with the people. And at first, uh, the people of his hometown were very excited about his, uh, his wise words. But then he shared with them the story of Elijah going to the widow of Zarephath. And he said, you know, there were many widows in Israel at that time, and yet God did not send Elijah to them. Rather, God sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath, to the widow in this foreign land where they worshipped the foreign gods. In other words, we must not believe that we deserve the blessing of God. We must realize that we do not deserve it, that we are in need. We must realize that we need to be humble. The people in Nazareth that time with Jesus, and this is narrated in Luke 4, uh, were proud. And when Jesus told them this story of Elijah, they actually rose up in anger. And it says in Luke chapter 4 that they were filled with wrath, they rose up, and they drove Jesus out of the town, and they brought him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff. You see, they, they believed that they deserved the blessing of God so much that when Jesus challenged them on that point, they rose up and tried to kill him. Now, on that day, Jesus passed through their midst. He slipped away, and he survived. But it was only a few years later when the same thing happened and Jesus went to his death. For when he was in Jerusalem, Jesus confronted the people uh, with their pride. And he showed them that they were relying upon themselves, not relying upon the grace of God. And as he challenged them, it made them angry and they took him and convicted him and scourged him and took him up another hill where they nailed him to a cross until he died. Now Jesus went to his death in order that we might be like the widow of Zarephath. 
He went to his death so that we could receive him like the widow received Elijah. Recognizing in our own humility, our own need. Recognizing that our jar of flour is almost out. It is when we humble ourselves and seek God that he provides for us. That he comes to us and he gives us not only bread and water, but he gives us his very self. In fact, that is what we celebrate every Sunday in the Sacrament of Communion. This is the bread which is more than bread. This is the bread which gives us the life that will not end. It is the body of Christ, the true jar of flour that never will run out. May we come to our Lord Jesus Christ, asking not only for the provision for our daily needs, and not only for our daily bread, but let us come before him and ask him for himself. Let us receive him into our hearts, as did the widow at Zarephath, longing and receiving with joy. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.